We don't treat multiple sclerosis correctly. Hey! We don't treat multiple sclerosis correctly. Now, I'm not saying that we're dumb or at fault or horrible people. I'm also not saying that we have all the tools that we need to do a good job. I'm simply saying that as a field, we need to do better. If we're going to beat up on MS, we need to divorce ourselves from old ideas. In my opinion, there's two big changes that need to occur. The first one is we need to apply the most effective, the most intense anti-inflammatory therapy available as early as humanly possible. We need to stop messing around with low efficacy anti-inflammatory medicines. The uh, shots that became available in the 90s, we need to get rid of those. Some of the mid-range pills that we have that are moderate in their ability to impact inflammation, we need to get rid of those. We need to keep in our armamentarium the most effective anti-inflammatory agents. In 2021, as I make this video, that would include a handful of monoclonal antibodies. That would also include cladribine. And it would also include the development of stem cell transplantation. And I think that those medicines that I just rattled off or that procedure, those things need to be applied as early as humanly possible. In the extreme case, we identify someone has MS on their MRI only. That's called radiographically isolated syndrome. And we intervene with these potent, potent anti-inflammatories way up front. Now, as you listen to me talk about this idea, you may think, gosh, Aaron's off his rocker. This is really, really crazy. What's Dr. Boster thinking? Well, I'm not thinking about now. I'm thinking about where we need to be. And I challenge you, think with me about the idea of applying the most potent anti-inflammatory as early as possible. I imagine what that would do to MS is change it dramatically for the better for the long term. Now, there's a second part to this because I don't think that in and of itself will make this disease quiet. In addition to the earliest application of the most intense anti-inflammatory available, we need something more. Presently, we're starting to clarify that treating with just inflammation is inadequate. I'll give an example of a paper that was recently published. This paper looked at um, a couple hundred people in Germany, people with relapsing MS who are all taking Tysabri. Now, Tysabri is a highly effective medicine. It's a, it's a very potent anti-inflammatory. It's considered amongst one of the best medicines that we have. Antisabri is really, really good at decreasing the frequency that people have attacks. So decreasing how often you have attacks. And in this population of people studied, Antisabri was working, but a percentage of them were progressing in their disability. They were getting worse in their neuro exam separate from attacks. That's a term that we call PIRA, progression independent from relapse activity. There's an amazing MS neurologist, a guy called Gavin Giovannoni, and he for years has written on a blog talking about smoldering MS, uh, which he calls the real MS. And the idea is uh, this is in the background and it's a slow neurodegenerative condition. And treating inflammation up front, the way I just described in this video, is going to be inadequate to quell that. We're going to need to bring to bear something just more. Before we move on, do me a favor. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Also, if you haven't yet, please consider subscribing to the channel. It helps out the algorithm and lets YouTube know that you like what I'm doing. That's why in part, I'm really, really excited about some of the medicines that are currently being developed. For example, Bertine tyrosine kinase inhibitors or BTK inhibitors. These molecules are not potent anti-inflammatories, or at least they don't appear to be at first blush. But what they do appear to do is something that we haven't seen yet. These are molecules that work both on the humoral adaptive immune response, so the B cells. They also work on the innate immune response, on microglia. They work on activated microglia in the brain. And I'm very, very hopeful that they may bring an entire therapeutic arm to MS, quelling this smoldering MS uh, that Gavin Giovannoni talks about. I can envision a future state where we meet someone where on the MRI or maybe with lab tests, we identify they have super early MS. We give them a very, very potent therapy, whether that be a stem cell transplant or Lymtrata, and then we transition to a medicine like a BTK inhibitor where we quell the innate immune response in the background. Some one-two punch like this might be the future of MS care. Now, 
this is a hypothesis and it's just my opinion and my opinion doesn't make me right it just makes me super opinionated I wanted to share with you sort of where my head was and where I think the field of MS might be going. As always, I wanna thank you for learning about MS with me and for going along on this journey with me. I would love to hear your thoughts and I look forward to reading them in the comment section down below. If you'd like to hear more philosophy of MS treatment, click the video that's on your screen right now. There's an entire playlist on the topic. I hope you find some content in there that you really like. And until my next video or my next live stream, or even better yet, the next time I see you at the Boster Center for MS. This is Aaron Boster saying be safe and take care.